Today's episode of Morning Coffee with Cameron was made possible by Free to Use Sounds. The Free to Use Sounds All in One Bundle 2.0 comes with over a terabyte of high quality, royalty free recordings that you can use for sound design, music production, post production, or whatever else you see fit, with free updates and new sounds added every single month. If you want to get instant access to more sounds than you could ever conceivably need, you can use my promo code VenusTheory5 at checkout to get the entire collection for only $20. Howdy doody, buckaroonies. What if you spent just a couple hours a day working on music every day for the next two weeks. Would you be able to make an EP? Would you write a full album? Would it pull you out of that creative slump you've been stuck in for months? Or would you finally have enough time to put together your first song ever and get it ready to release? Taking on this sort of challenge isn't really as hard as it might sound. Personally, I spend maybe around two hours a day on my phone, which I'm not really proud to admit, and another hour or so in the evenings playing games or watching a show. Pulling out our fancy math rectangle here, if you do something every day for around three hours a day, that's 1,095 hours a year, and that number doesn't really mean a whole lot. But if we divide that by 24, we get just over 45 days. That's over a month of your life, every single year, spent doing stuff that's really not all that productive or probably even that fulfilling. So if you applied those couple hours a day instead to working on your music, starting your business, or working after whatever has felt like some kind of impossible pipe dream to you, over the course of a year, those couple hours a day will really start to add up. The reward of taking some time to work on your craft isn't in just the end results. I think it's also in the the experiences you have and the lessons you learn along the way. For the last couple weeks, I took some time off of content creation and client work to just work on some music for myself. And today I wanted to share with you some thoughts and things I learned during my little music vacation. It's more important to have fun with than it is to make a song. A lot of my work these days tends to fall on the more clinical side of creating. And I suppose this kind of comes with the territory of working in an industry where you're often sent a pretty clearly defined brief and style guide. When it comes to working on your own music, it's easy to fall into the same sort of trap if you set yourself too many parameters because then you find yourself playing the role of an analytical editor rather than a free-flowing creative. There are a lot of ways you can break out of this analytical role, and one of my favorites is just doing the dumbest thing you can possibly think of. One of my favorite tracks I wrote over this break actually came entirely from following just that basic creative impulse to try something different and weird. To you, it might end up sounding dumb or weird or just outright out of place, but if you shift your perspective to that of the listener, these weird Weird and dumb ideas are often what make a track feel unique. Try doing the last thing you would do first. Sometimes your workflow can end up just feeling a bit stale. So try to analyze your process and figure out what your usual starting point is and then do anything other than that. By starting things off from a different perspective or a different position, the end result is inevitably going to be different, and it's a great way to break out of your comfort zone while still keeping yourself comfortable in what you know how to do. It's also important to remember to just not take things too seriously, because that can constrict and kill a session so quickly. Although you might not want to go as far as considering your music a joke, it's important to remember that not everything is going to be a masterpiece, and not everything has to be. I'm sure that your favorite artists and influences probably release really amazing music, but I guarantee if you dig deep enough into their catalog, there's bound to be something that you just don't like. When we think of our aspirations in terms of our favorite tracks and influences, we're only thinking of a segment of a segment of a segment of a segment of all released and recorded music ever made, and that's not really a healthy perspective with it. Making art is important work, but in the end, it's not brain surgery, so it's important to just loosen the f*** up. Try to develop your own system for writing music. This is something I want to dive more into in a future video because I think it's a really powerful and important topic, but in short, it's a lot like developing a workflow for making videos. Like an editing workflow for a video, having a system for writing music can make you more productive because it makes you work more efficiently. Although organization and regularity might seem like detrimental ideas when we're talking creative tasks, they can actually be incredibly helpful to just keep your eye on the prize and help you maintain perspective. Developing even a basic checklist or outline helps keep you moving forward and helps you be more consistent, intentional, and effective with your work. There's a reason that doctors and rocket launches and surgeons and all that use something like a simple checklist. It's because it works. Try sticking to a schedule, even if it is only just a few hours a day. 
Working as a fully self-employed creator, one challenge I faced early on and still face from time to time is that it's easy to get distracted and fall into the internet hole binging shows, playing games, or looking at shit I can't afford. When I worked at my last real job, it was helpful to have these sort of regular shifts in a way because it meant I only had a certain amount of time to actually get my job done. And when you apply the same line of thinking to working on music, it can help increase your output like exponentially. Sticking to a time frame of even just a few hours a day gives you a clear deadline and it makes you prioritize the task to get done and not just goof off in the DAW and then sit there wondering why you haven't released anything for months. It's all about tapping into the big song. Not to get all foo-foo new agey here on you, but I think this is a really important idea. A while ago, I watched a VH1 special on The Black Crows, where Chris Robinson talked about this idea that writing music is tapping into this big universal song, and you're taking out just a little piece that you discovered, and that little piece is uniquely yours. I've always been a big believer in the idea that music is a lot like sculpting. You don't carve the sculpture from the stone, you discover the sculpture in the stone. Working from simple ideas often leads to the most compelling tracks, and it's important to trust your gut and go with that first instinct, because that first creative instinct is often the best one. Exercising and developing that creative intuition muscle, I think, is one of the most valuable tools any creator can have. By learning to follow through with your first instinct and then follow on top of that with the next first thing that comes to mind, that's where you discover your sound and your thing, and that's where the truest form of your art is. It's better to make a bad song than it is to sit there waiting on a great one. Analysis paralysis is a real bitch, and it's really common with musicians and creators of all kinds. Is this the right sample for this track? Is this lighting really defining the mood? Is this the right lens for this shot? Is this really the proper color for the trees on the mountains? And does this outfit perfectly sum up who the character is at this point in their story arc? Instead of agonizing over the right decision to make or what the perfect track is, it's more productive to simply put in the work to get a basic result done and then work to improve it from there. Of course, not every track is going to turn out to be a banger, but if you work on enough bad songs, eventually a good one has to come up. Music and creativity are largely a numbers game. If you make it through enough bad sessions, a good one has to happen eventually. And eventually, through those good sessions and what you take away from them, you find yourself having a harder time having a bad session. Writing music, I think, is a lot like writing a script for one of these videos. It's important to lay down the basic idea first, vomiting out every idea that comes to mind, and then going back with editing and working to refine the result from there. It's easier to finish songs than it is to constantly start new ones. The first project I worked on during this little music break was actually a client project that's been on hold for a while, and I figured this would be a nice way to ease back into Venus Theory writing mode by working from something that was basically already done. It's important to learn to commit to a track and try to finish it, even if it sucks. If it does totally suck, you don't have to release it, and you can always take the opportunity to analyze where things went wrong and take something away from that session. It is absolutely essential when you work in a creative field to not look at failure as failure, but rather as a form of experimentation. If you let failure, or worse, a fear of failure, define your limitations, then it's no wonder that you're never going to make any progress. If a track does suck, just back off to the core elements and try working on it again. This happened to me many times during this break, and this happens to me all the time when I'm working on client projects. And it's surprisingly effective to just strip a song back to the core two or three components that inspired the track and rebuild the rest around that. If you're just not feeling a track, or maybe it's one of those days where you're not feeling like working on music at all, the 10 minute rule never fails for me. If you force yourself to put in actual work on something for just 10 minutes, you'll often find yourself following through with the next idea and the next little task to complete, and suddenly hours pass by without you even noticing, and suddenly you've got the job done. The last thing you need is new gear. Like a lot of you, at heart, I'm a massive gear nerd. I love playing with new plugins and gear, I love reading about upcoming releases and what's next, and I'm always drooling over something when my wallet suddenly slips and something shows up at my door. After my YouTube channel started to grow a bit, I found myself in a position where I'm always getting new plugins and gear sent over to me, and that's really cool at first, but eventually it just got really old. I don't want to sit here constantly checking out and talking about the next great compressor or the next big analog mono synth or whatever. 
I want to make f***ing music, and having a pile of gear doesn't help you make music. Sitting down and making f***ing music does. As someone with quite a bit of experience in music, I'll be the first to tell you that most plugins are probably overrated and your stock stuff works just as well, and a handful of tools you know is better than a mountain of gear you've barely put in the time with. This isn't to say that the occasional new piece of gear isn't useful or inspiring, but I think the takeaway is that the best tool isn't simply just the one you have, it's the one that inspires you to put in the work. I think the biggest takeaway of all though for me is that you just can't do everything. It's important to learn when to say no and not to pull yourself in too many different directions. My reason for taking this break wasn't really that I was burnt out creatively, it was more that I just felt like I was being stretched a bit too thin working on too many different things and I felt like I wasn't able to put in the same amount of effort and love into the projects I was working on as I would like to. Finding success in any field is great, and success comes from a good amount of hard work, but you can't keep up that pace of grinding and chasing success forever. Taking on new projects is exciting and it's always tempting to say yes, and at first it's a great way to build your skills and your portfolio. But eventually, if you keep saying yes to everything as things scale up, it becomes impossible to keep up the same level of quality and your work starts to suffer as a result. In the end, you can't master everything, and that's okay. So know your limits, know when to delegate, and most importantly of all, know when to say no. I've had a lot of fun these last couple of weeks getting a chance to work on some music, experiment with different ideas, and play around with my favorite gear, and even rediscover some stuff that had been sitting on my shelves gathering dust while I was too busy working on other projects and I'm really happy with what I made and I'm excited to share it with all of you. So what if you spent just a couple hours a day for the next couple weeks working on something you love? What could you create? I really have no idea, but I would love it if you would go out and show me something you're proud of. With that, thank you for watching. I'm glad to be back. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. And as always, I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something awesome.